After a severe winter storm in February, I was left with a cold damaged citrus tree. The Bloom Sweet grapefruit that I planted in the ground over 10 years ago was severely burned by a week of sub-freezing temperatures. I went to extremes in order to save one of my favorite specimens, utilizing heavy row cover and incandescent lights wrapped around the graft point near the base of the tree. There are still many issues to deal with as this tree begins to regrow. Did it actually survive? Will it ever produce fruit again? Whether you're aspiring to grow your own citrus in the future or you're like many gardeners, Partners, unsure of how to proceed in this situation, this video offers some tips for determining the severity of freeze damage and what to do next. What's up everyone? It's Scott from New Garden Road. You know I'm here to inform, inspire, and elevate you. Encouraging biodiversity and restoring habitat is my mission one garden at a time. So the first question that you need to answer would be, is your tree still alive? It's not a given just because you see some green growth at the base of your tree. Citrus trees are grafted onto rootstock. This is important to understand. They don't grow true to seed. If you were to take a seed from any citrus fruit, say a lemon, and plant that in some soil, what you're gonna get in terms of fruit won't be the lemon that you originally enjoyed because at the point in which that flower was pollinated, it got a mix of pollen and that's how they cross. That's why we graft them in order to preserve the specific genetics associated with a particular variety. So the graft point on your tree is gonna be ground zero for determining whether or not it is still viable. You should be able to find it on most citrus trees. Sometimes there is a visible difference in the circumference of the rootstock and the scion or the branch that was fused to it. Also, you may see a slight difference in color. That can be a key indicator. So locating the graft point on this tree is fairly easy. You can see there's a real definitive mark here and you can see a little bit of color differentiation like I was saying. And I pruned this shoot right here off but you can see that's clearly above the graft point line. That's what I wanted to indicate as a mark for you know basically the tree has survived. Occasionally the graft point is really low and it may be buried by soil or mulch that's not gonna be a good thing either. So if you don't find the graft point, gently excavate and see if you find it below the soil level. When you only see growth from below the graft point coming from the rootstock, that's not gonna be growing fruit for you. If you don't have anything above the graft at that point, essentially your tree is gone. This is a good example that I wanna show you on another tree. This is one I have growing in a container. This shoot right here is coming from just below that graft line. So this is a shoot from the rootstock. Oh my goodness, very, very spiny. Has a very unique leaf structure. This is the trifoliate leaf structure. Ow, very spiny. That's a really good indicator because visually it's quite different than most citrus trees that you're gonna grow for fruit, including this kumquat here. This is my Mewa kumquat, and you can see the leaf structure doesn't look anything like that trifoliate leaf pattern from the rootstock. Very clearly different. No spines either. So when the shoot is real close to the graft point here, and you're just not sure, compare the foliage. Compare whether it has spines or not. You know, a lot of citrus fruit will have spines. That alone is not enough of an indicator, but when you combine that with the structure of the foliage, you are going to be seeing a clearer picture. So you may see some new growth right after a freeze, but give it some time. On occasion, this can be a false start. It can trick you because it may have just enough energy to put into a little bit of new growth and then call it quits. By about the middle of May here in Central Texas, I know that I'm at a good point to make this determination. At that point in time, if you can determine that you have some viability, then you can go with the scratch test. Look closely at what you have remaining in terms of top growth on this tree and find a point up high that you can start doing the scratch test. Essentially, you're gonna use your fingernail or maybe the back of some pruners and lightly start to work into that bark. And what you're looking for is some signs of green. By utilizing the scratch test, you can rule out some branches or parts of the tree that are no longer alive. So if you start up high and you don't see any green as you scratch the bark away, keep moving your way down incrementally. And when you do find some green, mark that clearly. Give yourself a point of reference because ideally what you wanna do is cut into that green by about two inches. That means you're gonna cut off a little bit of that green along with removing all of the dead tissue from the tree. Okay, so at this point, I've determined that I have some life in my tree. What I really wanna do is promote a nice central leader going forward. You might be satisfied that your tree grew back and that alone is a good thing. However, when you look at this structurally, it gives me some cause for concern because maintenance can be a little bit more difficult. It's, it's hard to get in there. 
poor circulation. You might miss some insect infestation. And I need to clean it up a bit more. You can see I left some of this main branch here after I initially cut back the top growth that had died. I will be using a combination of some hand pruners, a handsaw, and some bypass loppers. I've taken a step back to see how we're doing. I've left, I think it's four branches. I kind of want to let them grow for a little bit, maybe see how they respond. And ideally, I would have one central leader. It seems like one of these two would be ideal because they're both coming off kind of a centered area. And there's this main branch here. This is definitely the strongest one. The only problem is it's coming off of a side shoot. And in the end, I was hoping to get it real uniform. So over time, as it healed over, it would just look like one main trunk. And when you're pruning your citrus tree, you don't want to leave stubs like this. But you want to make a clean cut. When you have bypass pruners, you want to have that blade side closest to where you want the flush cut to be. And that should heal over better. If you want a more appealing cosmetic look, you can go in here with some type of grinder, maybe a Dremel, and file that stub there down. That will smooth out over time. You can see this branch here, this is one of the older ones that died back, so this is dead. I'm gonna end up taking this off. I'm gonna take this small one off. I'm gonna take this large one here off. I'm not gonna go with this one as I originally thought. I'm gonna go with this one. It's nice and robust. It's gonna be a little bit tricky because it's a little bit of an offshoot here, but essentially I'm gonna cut this branch about like that. So I'm gonna come in here with my loppers, maybe take off some of the weight on these branches that I'm going to remove. And then I'll use a small saw to take them down a little bit further. I'm gonna need my reciprocating saw to take out some of the bigger dead limbs. That's the one that scared me the most right there. It's a new tree. I feel like I did pretty good. Closer look at some of these cuts here. This is the first time I've done anything like this. So I'm far from a pro, but I got some really good advice from my friend Rob down at the Natural Gardener here in Austin. And he does a lot of bonsai. So we took some lessons from that practice and transferred it to this process but you can see when i look down at this trunk it's fairly straight and then we've got this main branch coming up here going up to about 10 feet i i do expect that more suckers will emerge over time and one of the things i'm going to need to do maintenance wise is to prune those out i want all the energy going into this new main trunk here keep all that energy going up so as i take a step back here and give you a good look you can see what a focal point this tree is in the garden so now i think the only thing left to do is to come in here with some more soil amendments compost soil conditioner probably some azomite and uh some mulch some nice pine straw pine needle mulch give it a nice drench of liquid seaweed You wanna say hi, Izzy? What do you have to say to the people? Make sure you check the graph point. That's where it all goes down. Isn't that right? If it's green below the graph point, no good. If it's green on top, all good. Tell them. Tell them what the deal is. Ugh. Did you get that? Butterflies all over the place. I'm gonna burn. Now check out more awesome gardening videos on my channel. Like this video if you like it, and follow New Garden Road for weekly content. You can grow your own food. Keep it organic.